I think it's a matter of time for equity to suffer in two ways. Number one is uh, I think real disposable income means that demand is uh, probably in real terms not going to follow through. Inflationary demand may be, and there are some companies and corporations who can actually game inflation. But in the main, uh, we're going to look at shrinking margins, oh, number one. Uh, number two, we're going to look at much higher interest rates. Uh, we're not even halfway there. And interest rates are used to discount future profits. So if you have a smaller stream of profits being discounted at a higher rate, the only way that equity markets can stay where they are, or advance, is by multiples either being uh, at current very high levels uh, stationary or by increasing further. And I find that very hard to believe. There is an argument, though, David, that um, as growth begins to slow, the central banks actually will back away from the tightening path that has been implied by the market at the moment. I mean, is there a possibility here that ultimately because of the size of the debt stock and because of the Fed's concern about markets and the risk of um, rapid deleveraging, that we get maybe a March hike and not much more than that, and that the, the, the market planned path of a terminal rate around, I don't know, one and a half or 1.75 percent actually never happens. It is possible. It really depends on the March hike and what it does to over leverage and what it does to inflation. My own view is it's not enough to bring down the mountain of over leverage and it's not enough to address inflation. So we will get more. But we have to remember that this is a very fragile pyramid of debt. It is a very fragile pyramid of demand, which has been financed by central banks and governments. And therefore, we really do not know to what extent it will suddenly collapse or reverse after a very minor increase in the cost of that pyramid. Uh, we don't know. The other thing we don't know, which I've got to mention because it is the ghost in the room, is what happens if Russia invades Ukraine? Uh, what will happen to equity markets? And my best guess is most investors are treating uh, uh, Mr. Putin as background music, which I'm sure Mr. Putin would not agree with. If he does, as a result of getting to a point of no return and not being able to go home with nothing, do something dramatic about Ukraine, then I would very much doubt that certainly European equity markets are the outlook for the global economy would not be radically altered if sanctions were to be in any way effective. That would, of course, mean that you would exceed the US threshold of pain, which is extremely low, and the whole thing would go into reverse. So it's certainly worth bearing that one in mind. It's no, far from being out of the question. Um, David, in that scenario, uh, we've already, on the fear of it, partly seen oil prices go up to $93 a barrel for Brent as well. Do you see a significant three-digit um, handle on the price of oil then? I think if there was an invasion of Ukraine and there were to be uh, sanctions which impeded either Russia's access to foreign exchange mechanisms, uh, messaging systems and so on like SWIFT, or which prevented them exporting their commodities, either oil or gas or coal, and we can go on, I think at that point in time, you would most certainly see oil prices at 120. $120 a barrel, David? Yes. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.